twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. A quilt, that's what you are. And that's what we're working on tonight, the Twinkling Twilights quilt. And I have a video extra for you where I show you how to easily piece a quilt back. Are you a pieced quilt back type of quilter or a solid back type of quilter? Well, we'll find out, but let's get to the fabric. So I have the kit for the Twinkling Twilights quilt, which is a little hard to say, Twinkling Twilights. Anyway, what's great about this kit is it comes with all the colors that I need, and I think they do almost look like a sunset with the purples and the sangria. I don't know if that's the name of the color, but I feel like that's a sangria kind of red. And the beautiful golds. And if you're looking for details on where to find the kit or the pattern, you can check that out in the description box below. So I'm gonna start cutting up all these beautiful ombre colors and the white background so that our stars can start to twinkle. So I'm gonna take each of my star fabrics and cut them into strips. Straightening up the edge and then cutting away. Now that I have my strips, these wider ones are gonna go to the side. I'm gonna use my Tri-Rex ruler to cut those in a second. These are gonna get cut into some smaller squares real quick. Now that I have a few squares cut out, I'm gonna do the same with the background fabric. For these bigger strips, I'm gonna cut them out using the Tri-Rex ruler. Now, you've seen this before. I've used this in other episodes, like Grotto. Remember that really cool quilt that had a curved illusion, but it was really easy to quilt? You should go check that out. It's a pretty fun one. So this particular quilt has you cut out this elongated triangle shape, but they also want you to do it in the mirror image. So if I flip it over, then I'll get the other image as well. But since that takes too long, what I'm gonna do is fold the fabric so it's wrong sides together, and then I'm gonna cut out my pieces. So I'm gonna line it up with that three and a half line, holding it in place, and then cutting smoothly, and what I'll get is two blocks, mirror images of each other. Now for the next one, all I have to do is rotate it and cut this way. That means I can cut out a lot of these quickly. And I'm gonna just keep cutting out some of these, cut out some of my other colors, and then we're gonna see how this twinkling star comes together. All right, that was some hard work. Not really, but I just felt like I needed a little sip. So I have my squares, my star pieces, I have some other blocks. Let's start sewing this block together. So these triangles are gonna be paired with my white background triangles to make what looks like a half square rectangle. So when I take one of these over here and I flip it just like that, that's the block that we're gonna get. And what's fun is it almost looks like that this is the back of a piece of fabric, but it's not. It's just that lighter ombre color. And I think this different change of color is what's really gonna make it twinkle. So I'm gonna need to make four of these, and then I'll make four with the opposite side or the mirror image block, and they'll go just like that. So sewing this together is very easy, but I wanna point out I'm gonna have some weird little angles next to each other. So when I flip them over, what I wanna see is that little bitty point sticking out of there. What that's doing is taking into account the seam allowance that we need for this block. Now, if I wanna make sure that that doesn't slip, I can use my, <laughs> it's a Cheeto. I don't know why there's a Cheeto in my pin dish. Oh, you never know what you're gonna find. So I'm gonna pin this together and then sew a quarter inch down that seam. So when I press them open, then I'll have my little half square rectangle just like that. Now I'm gonna make four of these and four of this direction so I can put together my block. So I still have a lot of triangles to sew together, but I'm gonna move these out of the way because I'm gonna show you how these blocks go together. Now starting with the purple, I'm going to align this this way. So the bottom one's gonna flip around and ultimately these will be the star points to my block. But I not only have to make this, I need to make a mirror image of this one as well. So we're taking the block, mirroring it, mirroring the whole thing. I'm sure that there might be a couple instances where I don't get them quite right, but I think it's gonna be fine. So next time around, it's going to go like this. Then like that. Perfect, so you can see the slight difference there. But sewing these together is as easy as folding them over and sewing a quarter inch seam down the side. And let's see the first one, beautiful. And the second one, fantastic. Now what I'm gonna do is press them and make a lot more of those. The blocks are pressed and that's when it becomes very obvious that maybe my piecing isn't perfect. See how this one has a little space in between the point? That's actually what we want because that's gonna be taken in the seam allowance and give me that nice point. 
Now here, it comes all the way to the edge. That means when I sew it with a seam allowance, I'm not gonna have a happy star. Now I'm gonna take a second and fix that. Not because I'm a perfectionist, but I have to have at least one block in this whole quilt where it looks good, right? If the camera wasn't on, I probably wouldn't have fixed that one. That's better. I'm gonna press that. You can see here, now I have my space between the point and the edge. So this will be a happy star now. Now I just have to make that about 96,000, well, just a few more times. So using the points to my stars that I have, I'm also going to pull in these four patch blocks. Now I didn't show you how to do those because I was really jamming out to a great song. So I have my four patch block that's going to go in the center and it has the two background squares. And then I'm going to get out my star points and start lining them up. And what I really want to happen is I want the color fabrics to touch and the white fabrics to touch. So that's going to help be my clue when it comes to lay out this block that I have it the right way. So as I'm placing it where it needs to go, I'm gonna have this twinkling, beautiful little star that makes me oh so very happy. So here, now I have my points and I have to fill in the rest of my block. Two of those are gonna be the background squares, the white fabrics, and the other two are going to be four patches. The four patches will have the white fabric going to the outside. Oops, I may have sewed that one on backwards. Let me find another one, that's pretty. Fantastic, so this is what the block looks like. And at this point, all I have to do is sew the blocks into rows and sew the rows together. So the first row of the quilt is laid out and what's going on here is we put the first block out and the next one rotates so that these come together and make almost like a half square right there. And this is gonna have a really fun secondary pattern. Nancy Smith, who designed this pattern, is a genius in her head. Fantastic. Now, let's just talk about the star in the room here. There's a lot of points on this block and you can see some of them came out beautifully. Fantastic. Some of them, not so much. I may have just had a momentary lapse of, I don't know, right there. But here's the thing, there's so many points in this quilt, it doesn't matter. When the whole thing is finished, all you'll see is that overall effect of the fabric and it's gonna look amazing. So I'm gonna sew the rows together. Well, if there's one thing I can say about this quilt top is that it's finished. Those points, man, they were hard. Well, not quite finished yet. I need to put some borders on this. She has some narrower borders on the sides. So over here, we'll put some smaller ones and the same on the bottom. And then she has a nice wide border on the top. All right, so these borders are gonna make it look like those stars are twinkling and sparkling right off the center of the quilt. So I'm gonna add those borders and then I'm gonna piece the quilt back. And I have a bonus video for that, so check out the description box below and I'll see you when it's time to start quilting. After all the sharp points and straight lines on this quilt, I'm ready for a break. So I'm going with something swirly, something curvy. How about a paisley feather? One of my favorite go-to machine quilting designs. So I have my quilt sandwiched and ready to go. Don't forget, you can check out that free video that shows you how to make a pieced quilt back. Just check it out in the description box below and I'm gonna get to quilting. And since I'm working on a larger quilt and I'm quilting swirls, I'm gonna wear my gloves because the grippy tips help make it easier. Okay, so I decided to go with my clear foot because I thought it would help me see where I'm going and I like how it hops over the bulky seams. But the problem is when I'm quilting paisleys, it doesn't give me consistent echoing because the foot isn't perfectly round. This one I think is gonna give me some good consistent echoing. But am I gonna rip this out and start over? Heck no, you never become a better quilter by ripping it out. That's staying in there. So I'm gonna make sure to fill it in with more quilting so you can't even see that when I'm done. So the paisley feather is really easy to quilt. You basically start by quilting a nice elongated swirl. It doesn't matter how long you quilt it, just quilt it out into that space and then you're gonna echo around it, coming back to the beginning, and then echo it again. Keep echoing until you end up at the bottom of your swirl, because from there, that's where you're gonna start adding your paisleys. Now, paisleys are just little teardrops, so just quilt a teardrop that extends out nice and skinny, coming back to the point, and then echo, echo, 
Echo. This design is so echo heavy, just keep echoing until you're ready to add your next paisley. A nice skinny little teardrop shape, and then echo, echo, echo. Now I'm quilting these paisleys and echoing around them, building them up around that original swirl that I quilted. And these are gonna be the petals or the parts of our feather. Now once I quilt my paisleys and I start to get towards the center of my little swirl, if I don't have room, I'll just echo inside or add some baby paisleys. But then once that whole thing is finished, I'm gonna echo back out of that swirl around the paisleys until I get to where I wanna add my next swirl. The thing with this design is you just wanna keep echoing, 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 and filling in any gaps. Now let's see how this paisley feather is turning out. Oh, this is my favorite design. Well, they all are kinda of like my favorite design, but I really love this one. There's so much texture that all that echoing adds to it. And remember, if you think it doesn't look good, keep echoing around it until it fills it in. Now I'm doing this in the border because you can actually kind of see what's going on. But once I get into the middle of the quilt or all those beautiful stars, I'm gonna make it a little easier on myself by spreading out the lines of quilting and just doing a feather meander, which is the same, just a lot quicker. So let's get to it. So quilting the feather meander is a lot like quilting the paisley feather, just without all the echoing. So I'm gonna start with a little swirl that comes in on itself. And then from the center, start adding my petals, which are kind of like half heart shapes working my way around back to the beginning. Then, once that feather is done, it's time to quilt more, so I'm gonna echo around until I get to a spot where I can add another swirl and more petals. Swirl, petal, echo. There's only three steps to this design, so just keep repeating until you fill in the area. Okay, I only quilted a few feather meanders, but I wanna show you why I love this design. It's perfect for working your way around areas of your quilt that may be more bumpy than others. For instance, if I have a seam or a point that's kind of hard to get through, I can just work my design around it instead of having to go through it. So I love that it's a lot quicker because it's not gonna be as noticeable, and then I put all my effort in the paisleys. Now, I know I've been talking a lot about feathers, paisleys, meanders. Don't worry, I have some free quilting diagrams that I drew just for you. And you can download those by going down to the description box below and you'll get the link to it. Well, I'm gonna keep on quilting and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm finished. I wished upon a star and my wish came true. This quilt is finally freaking finished. I love how the ombre fabrics make them twinkle right off the top and I'm loving, loving, loving the texture the quilting adds to it. Adding a paisley feather in the border is an easy way to make it look more complex while not spending a whole lot of time on the quilt itself. And if I do say so myself, I think the back looks almost as good as the front. You wanna see it? Well, you have to go check out that bonus video that I did about piecing your quilt backs, and you can find that in the description box below. Hey, leave a comment below and tell me whether you like pieced backs or solid backs, and we'll see which one's more popular. And be sure to subscribe while you're there. Well, happy quilting. <laughs>